Well, it's time for the best deal across North Alabama. A chance to get your legal questions answered free of charge from our friends over at, of course, Timberlake and League. William Missouri joining us. The number you need to call, 256-536-0077. I don't believe we have a caller on the line just yet, William, but I've been reading about something that I've got to ask you about. So yeah. people cutting back on things they feel like they don't need, just trying to survive this tough economy, one of them, insurance. So how do you file a claim when the other person has no insurance? Yeah, and it's more common than you may think, Chris. One in five drivers in Alabama has no insurance. They get insurance in order to get their license tag, registration, and then don't pay their monthly premium. And so they're essentially uninsured, right? And so what happens if you get hit by somebody who either doesn't have insurance or they take off and drive away? In those instances, if you have full coverage, you have bought protection through uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage that will protect you for your vehicle damage through your collision policy and then also for bodily injury through your uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage. But if you don't have full coverage and you're saving money by having liability only, then you are uh, somewhat up the creek, right? Because there's no one to make a claim through. So in that instance, your only option is to file a lawsuit directly against the person who hit you. And what you tend to find is that someone who is willing to drive around uninsured typically doesn't have many assets to go after or they're living paycheck to paycheck. And so even if you get a judgment against them, it can be very difficult to ever collect any money from that person. And so it really does become important that you have full coverage in those instances. And so really in Alabama, even if you're not at fault for a wreck, you have a one in five chance of getting hit by somebody with no insurance. So it's fairly common, unfortunately. A frightening statistic, and I have a question for you. We have time a little bit later. Right now, though, we have Ann on the phone with a question for you, William. Ann, go ahead. Okay, yes. My husband and I both, we have a will, and if anything happened to both of us, it states that it would be divided equally between our two sons. Well, one son has passed away. He had no children but a wife. Is his wife entitled to anything? Um, generally, under the rules of intestate secession, the answer to that is going to be no. In your particular instance, it's going to be uh, determined by the wording in the will that you have. And so if it you know, says uh, to the son or a surviving issue or to the son and spouse, you know, then there's a, a potential there for uh, the wife to make a recovery but it's going to be very spe um, fact specific as to what the language in your particular will says. And so that is something in that particular instance that I would you know, take to a lawyer who practices elder law or estate planning and let them take a look at it and maybe revisit that will and make sure that upon your uh, and your spouse's death that your possessions and property do disperse you know, according to your will and according to your desire versus, you know, what an old will may say. All right, thank you so much, and for your call today. I do have a question for you, William. Back yeah. to our original question. We were talking about uh, how to file a claim when the other person involved in an accident is uninsured. So if you have to use your insurance to cover this accident, then can you also go after them for the increase in your premiums if they turn out to have any assets? So when you make a claim against your uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage, that is a no-fault policy. And what that means is that you have to be not at fault for the wreck in order to make that claim. And anytime you make a claim under your own no-fault policies, it has no effect on your rates or coverageability. The whole reason you've been paying for that particular policy of insurance since you were 16 is just in case you were ever in that situation. And so the short answer is no, it's gonna have no effect on your rates to coverageability. In reality, you may be out the cost of your deductible uh, on the property damage. Now what your own insurance carrier will do is then go sue that person. And if they're able to make any collection from them, then you will get your deductible reimbursed to you. If they're not able to collect anything, then you'll be out the cost of your deductible, but you should still see no effect in your uh, premium since you weren't at fault for the wreck. Good to know. And I just learned we have Travis right now on the line with a question for you, William. Travis, go ahead. 
Travis, are you there? Yes, yes. Uh, I would like to know, how long do you have to, uh, where you can take someone to court uh, over a, a, a claim that they said, you know, they told me that you, both drivers were at fault. Sure. So in, in a typical motor vehicle collision, you have two years in Alabama from the date of the wreck uh, to either resolve out your claim or to file a lawsuit. That's called your statute of limitations. And if you go past that two year mark, it's like a hard line in the sand. There's no coming back from it. So if you don't file your lawsuit within two years, you're forever barred under Alabama law to make a recovery. And it's different state to state. In Tennessee, it's one year. And so it is state specific, but in Alabama, it's two years. 